you are welcome to HN What's Your Say? The number one listening show, where we discuss real issues with real people like you. We are still featuring our Kelly. Real name, Robert Sylvester Kelly. Also known as the R&B King. If there are people who have had to deal with the U.S. courts numerous times in their lifetime, I am sure R. Kelly is one of them. While many have been real criminals, and of course many others wrongly indicted, and some falsely convicted, R. Kelly's New York indictment was just another wrongly placed legal action against the R&B King. Among the charges that he was faced with was the RICO violation, which suggests that R. Kelly did operate an enterprise of gang members, who were purposely recruited to help him in his mission to find and abuse the women he allegedly kidnapped and held hostage in his mansion like the cases read. The allegations also suggested that he physically abused these women to near death, and spanked them whenever that wronged him. The allegation itself sounds so synthetic. It actually sounds like a story from a Hollywood movie producer at the peak of his career, trying to create a love and romance film to be streamed on Netflix. And for this, R. Kelly was convicted in the Brooklyn Federal Court by a one-judge Ann Donnelly and her jury, which suggested that indeed R. Kelly did operate an enterprise, where he hired individuals that were never brought to court with him, and formed a powerful criminal racket with which he implemented this alleged kidnap, hostage situations and physical abuse of these women. The prosecutors actually did move around the courtroom with pictures of R. Kelly's associates Daryl McDavid and Milton June Brown, which they showed to almost every witness to identify the two men, and state how they were involved in these alleged events. They literally wanted to assume that with these two associates, R. Kelly did have an illegal enterprise. If that had been the case though one will wonder, why was R. Kelly being tried alone in New York and not with his counterparts? Despite this, even the prosecution witnesses at the Brooklyn court trial did not say anything that suggested these two employees of R. Kelly had in any way played a role in the alleged violations. Nevertheless, Honorable Judge Ann Donnelly, together with his jury of 12 went on to find R. Kelly guilty of this rather important charge, and slapped R. Kelly with a 30-year sentence in the end. Hearing of a 30-year sentence will make anyone think there is probably a murder among these charges. The truth is however different. According to Ann Donnelly, R. Kelly needs to do 30 years, only because he was suspected to have violated the RICO charge, which he clearly didn't do, and probably because he is a very black and successful man. I will not lie to you that I know why she did this to R. Kelly. Perhaps she just doesn't love his music at all, and is sure that when in jail where there are no studios, he will not be making more irritating songs she may be forced to listen to. We surely don't know. The events that unfolded during the Chicago trial will however cause anyone to doubt whether RICO violations were even a possibility. The associates whose pictures were moved around the Brooklyn Federal Court have been acquitted in Chicago, for any kind of conspiracies with R. Kelly. If they were never involved in any such acts with him, then who exactly is the prosecution referring to when they talk of an enterprise? I am not sure one man alone can be regarded an enterprise on their own. While the Chicago trial registered a win for R. Kelly on 7 out of 13 counts, it also did create a foundation to start from while arguing out R. Kelly's innocence at the upcoming New York appeal. The RICO charges clearly were simply an overcharge like R. Kelly's attorney Jennifer Bonjean suggested, and these will duly be scrapped off his charge sheet. There has just been too much prejudice in this R. Kelly case beyond imagination. There seems to be a mission way bigger than to see justice prevail among the actors, causing them to try and find anything that can make R. Kelly stay in prison and take away the rest of his remaining life. At this point, I want to believe that the prosecution and the judges had the option of a death sentence for the nature of charges they have managed to concoct, and Donnelly and her Chicago counterpart Lynn Weber would gladly consider it. And this makes me wonder, just how cruel can these people be? To wish someone all this negative for nothing should be brain draining. The good news however is that while R. Kelly prepares to appeal the New York case, he is not starting from zero. According to Maria Slavinsky, the prosecution both in Chicago and New York are relying on this tape evidence as their lifeline. But remember the tape is also contestable evidence now, considering its authenticity has not been determined by forensics, and the chain of custody is broken. 
if this tape gets thrown out, they have no case, and the rest will just be like a game of dominoes. They started the fight, so Bonjean will give it to them. There will be no room for racial prejudice in this country. According to Matilda. Indeed, the RICO charges were simply smuggled into the New York trial, with the intention of beefing up charges, so as to secure the longest possible sentence for the R&B King. Remember if the RICO violation charges were not on the charge sheet, that would be 20 years off. And R. Kelly would be guaranteed a life after prison even if the other charges stood ground. Now this is what those after R. Kelly don't want to hear. They want to be sure that he will eventually die in prison, and that is their primary goal. In my opinion, if anyone deserves to be charged for RICO violation, it is this very sophisticated and organized enterprise that is determined to break whatever law stands in their way, just to make sure R. Kelly does not live to see the light of day again. Thinking through this critically, one may think they have so much to gain from this. But the reality is different. Even the most highly paid mercenaries die regretting the way they live their lives later to die so empty. Spending two decades hunting down R. Kelly must have felt so lonely for the likes of Jim Deirogatis. According to Melinda Jones, Judge Ann Donnelly's interpretation of RICO violation has confused me for a year now. I find it rather conflicting with every other definition I get from referrals and from the books I have read. How could she jump to conclusion that if R. Kelly did wrong, then his associates did help him do wrong just because they worked for him at that time? I mean, what's there to guarantee this? Completely nothing. And Donnelly shockingly woke up to baptize R. Kelly and his employees in illegal enterprise, with no consideration whatsoever of what an illegal enterprise really means. Perhaps she should resign and join Congress, where she can be involved in creating new laws. But for the existing laws, I am not sure she will get what she wants. If you wish to take part in a live interview on this channel discussing any of these topics, let us know by emailing us on sashahnnewsroom at gmail.com for scheduling. That is all we had for you today on HN What's Your Say? To keep updated whenever we post a new video, subscribe to this channel now. Also remember to hit the bell icon and enable notifications. And feel free to share your opinions with us in the comment section below and let us know if you would like us to publish your views in our next release. We value all our subscribers' opinions.